Greetings, everyone. In this video that you're about to see, you're going to see an interview with Martha Alter Hines with me and Christina Lee about our arch model for healing, which is what we've written about in our book, From Trauma to Freedom, One Woman's Journey and a Holistic Guide to Healing. But I wanted to take some time in this interview for you to get a sense of this path and model for healing that supports us in coming into wholeness, coming into our true self, and healing on all levels, physically, emotionally, spiritually, relationally. And the ARCH model is based on the ancient medicine wheel that is about our orienting ourselves to the four directions and the wholeness of who we are. We walk this path, entering the wheel from the south, we move to the west, to the north, to the east, integrating different aspects of ourselves. And in this case, with the ARCH model for healing, healing different facets of ourselves, ultimately to move into the center of the medicine wheel, to come into wholeness, to integrate all of the parts of ourselves, and then to align with our true self, our soul self, with the earth and sky and all that is. In the arch model, it, we start in the south with alignment, then we move to the west relationship, then to the north consciousness, then to the east healing in order to come to center. So it's very much about initially aligning with our witness self and our soul self, then working our issues in relationship. We're traumatized in relationship and we heal in relationship. Moving into the North consciousness, how do we reclaim, remember, reconnect with the lost parts of ourselves to work through the trauma from the past and regain those parts of us that got buried or split off in order to reclaim those gifts and those energies and aspects of ourselves. Then we come to healing. How do we weave those parts of ourselves into our wholeness? How do we heal and feel our embodiment here with all of who we are in order then to move into center and into the wholeness and fullness? Of ourselves. So here is a discussion of some of our exploration and our experiences of the arch medicine wheel and the arch model for healing. Blessed be. Hello, everybody. Welcome. So my name is Martha Alter Hines, and I am so happy, honored, feeling joyful, and moved to be here with Christina Lee. And Heather Ensworth. And um, I am going to have the pleasure and the honor to interview Christina and Heather to attempt to give, to really highlight this beautiful work that you two do in the ARCH program and in the, the book that you co wrote, um, From Trauma to Freedom, which I have right here. <laughs> Incredibly beautiful. And and in particular, what I'm what I'm excited about to to hear about, to talk about, and to really open up in the world is this beautiful reality that you that I witness in both of you and in your work around um, holding space, essentially for bringing us all to wholeness. And and I and I feel that calling in the world. I feel that calling from the spiritual world, from the earth, from our own hearts and from existence. And um, I can say more if it feels relevant, but in my own work with trauma professionally, that's, that's a, that was a piece that I felt missing is this, this focus on what it really means to bring us back to wholeness. Uh, and in my experience of you, your work, this book, all of the above, uh, that is, that is truly the intention I feel in it. And that's the effect I feel in it. And so I'm so grateful that you do this work in the world, that you're holding space for this 
and I'm honored to get to talk with you about it. So mm, thank you, Martha. Thank, thank you. you Martha. <laughs> so um, I would love to start with just getting your perspectives on why do you feel called to do this work? What is your perspective on what is happening on our planet in this time? And I know that both of you feel deeply passionate from, I think I'm speaking for you, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it comes from deep in your soul, this work, right? And um, so I would love to start out just hearing that meta perspective on where is that coming from and why are you called to do this? Why don't you start, Christina? <laughs> well, I was going to say, why don't you start, Heather? <laughs> Such a good question. And I think that's true for all of us that, you know, the is the soul's yearning or the soul's pull to do this work. And um, I, I think that's certainly facilitated by my own journey um, through through trauma. Um, and then that tends to, you know, be the instinct to give back, want to help once you feel like you're enough on the other side. Although I think the healing, um, the healing path is, is forever. We do it, um, you know, um, until we leave the planet. I think it's, um, it is the soul's journey. I, I really appreciate the, um, the wholeness piece that although we are wounded, we are also whole. There is a part of us untouched. And I think it's it, it was it's pieces like that I felt were missing, um, not just through my own experience, but for being a practitioner and working with others, that there were these crucial pieces that um, were needed. And I think that um, um you know, along, along with kind of pulling together a more um, expanded approach. Um, I think it's, it was a, a real passion for me. I know Heather as well to be able to get tools or healing to more people uh, so that more could have access. So it's all, we also try to make it very accessible. So it's a, it's, you know, it's a very complete model, I would say, and, and you know, and also flexible and fluid but um, it's also very, it's very accessible to, I think, you know, everyone, whatever your background, whatever your culture, whatever your knowledge of trauma or not. Um, so I, I, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think if I can just add on that, I think just because, um, and Heather and I have often talked about this. If the more of us heal, the less projection happens in our world. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, because until we heal, we just project out and the trauma is perpetuated. And maybe that's a good segue into Heather, <laughs> what she's going to talk about, but that's crucial to the change we need to see. Right. Well, yeah, that's beautifully said. And, you know, like you were just saying, Christina, I think our, Martha, our individual journeys really led us into doing this book together. I mean, Christina's healing journey is extraordinary, and she was really pulling in all that she'd learned from her own process of healing. And for me, doing healing work with, you know, my focus as a psychologist was trauma work. And I did very deep work with people and kept doing advanced training beyond my PhD to pull in all the tools that I could to be helping people. And I felt like I hit a wall and that there was a lot missing and that certain ways that we work in traditional therapy that are too often focused on the mind. Yes. Uh, actually, at times I felt like we're keeping people caught in the trauma. And so for me, what's exciting about the ARCH model is it's pulling in all aspects of the self. And it's, as Christina was saying, it's ultimately the medicine wheel is that we work with as a shamanic uh, archetypal container for this healing journey ultimately is about how do we come to center to come back into that alignment with our soul self 
that is really, as Christina said, untouched by the trauma and can guide our personality self in how to heal from the trauma. But we also have a model that's not only healing on the physical, emotional, mental, spiritual levels, but is also about being held by the energies of the earth and sky and spirit, that we're not alone in that journey. So we can say a lot more about the model, but to me, it's it's such an integrative approach to how we can heal and come into wholeness and come into that alignment with our soul self. And as you were saying, Martha, I think this is such a critical time on the planet where we are in a time of radical change and moving into new paradigms, moving into a new age. And unless we heal, we can't really take on these new paradigms and higher consciousness. So I feel like it's a time on the planet where there's an accelerated energy for healing and transformation and awakening. And this model is, I I think, a powerful path for how to engage in that process. Yeah. What was so profound for me when I, so my background is, that you, you, you both know, but for people who don't know to contextualize where I'm coming from is I got my master's in clinical social work from Smith college in 2001 and Smith, the, the focus, the primary focus at Smith is on trauma and attachment <clears throat> treatment. I spent the majority of the next 20 years working um, as a psychotherapist, as a social worker, and as a supervisor in the child welfare system, in the child, child protective si- system, uh, in different parts of the United States. But I didn't know a single other person who both was grounded in traditional psychotherapeutic approaches and had a perspective that incorporated the body, the spirit, the soul, the earth the cosmos, you know, existence in their work. And then a little over a year ago, I ran across you (laughs) and I read your book from trauma to freedom. And I I was blown away. I cried. It was like an incredible epiphany to realize I wasn't alone. I wasn't crazy. And not only that, but that you all, you both had already established, established this deeply uh, rooted and detailed and careful, thoughtful model uh, that, you know, is just so beautiful and incorporates so much of what I was getting shown and just what my instincts were saying to me um, that was missing in all of those years of my work as a clinical social worker with trauma and attachment. So, Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. It's beautiful. And thank you so much for doing what you're doing. Mm. Thank you, Martha. Yeah, mm. you've had quite the journey. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. arrival too. Mm-hmm. But Christina, it might be helpful to say a little bit more about your journey too, and how mm-hmm. you were incorporating in your own process, some of these other ways of healing. Mm. Yeah, and, and and just when, um, yeah, I'm just relating to what Martha was was um, speaking about as far as these energies coming through you and guiding you, and I certainly think on my path that was happening as I was collecting notes and and keeping journals and detailed kind of documentation on my process, and then at the end collaborating with Heather, really feeling like these energies you know, through our own experiences and our own knowledge base, but coming together, greater energies than us, you know, you know, forming and um, a lot of movement there, where it felt like it was us, and it was so much beyond us. Um, So there's a lot of I just want to speak to that, because there's a lot of I think, honor and respect uh, to its own consciousness, if I can say it that way and what it knew it needed to have and incorporate to come forth. Um, but yeah, my, my journey, it, 
um, there was a lot of repressed memories, um, a lot of repression of the trauma. And when that came out, it was kind of like it was Pandora's box. So it was grabbing the resources that I knew of, um, working them until I knew I needed something beyond that, finding new ways to work the trauma. Um, and then kind of sitting back and saying, uh, then starting to work with other people. Um, and, um, so it's kind of, uh, yeah, so just really, um, finding what was working, what wasn't working and what was more needed. And the model is so, it's just these, these transpersonal energies that we draw on, um, but also it just expands it out beyond just the mind body really touch on the soul, but we really use the energies to support. So those external energies, we, we work to build internal energy centers, let's say to help us uh, to help align or stabilize or, um, you know, without, I guess, going too much into the model at this point, but yeah, I think, I think, uh, beyond our own understanding, these, like, like your experience, your, your, um, knowing or what came through to you is that this, this needs to move into a new way of healing. Or I would even call it maybe an old way. I don't know. I mean, it's a new and an old way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Did you want to say? If I could follow up on that. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yes. when I, when I had my crisis point, when I was in practice in California and actually had this very profound mystical experience saying, you need to leave your life as you've known it. Yeah. And, and I just went through this very, very intense personal transformational process. But part of the guidance that I was getting at that time was to begin to explore ancient wisdom and healing traditions. Yeah. And that's how I ended up exploring shamanism and both Christina and I have a lot of training in Chinese energetic medicine and some of these ancient ways of understanding healing. And so a core template in our arch model is the medicine wheel, mm -hmm. which is a very ancient archetypal uh, path for healing. It's a meditation pra practice. It's a healing practice. And part of for me, what's so profound about the medicine wheel, it's known in every culture and is, is coming from very ancient times. It holds this energy of how do we orient ourselves in this world and in the wholeness, the oneness of all that is, but find our unique self you know, in in alignment with the earth and sky and the oneness, and then are on a path of consciousness and of healing and of reclaiming all the parts of ourselves. I mean, the medicine wheel is this circle that's holding the wholeness of all of who we are. It's a sacred container that supports us in that healing process, but it's also grounding us in our connection with the earth and sky and spirit and oneness, and then providing a path, a map for how you go through the process, the phases of healing and coming into wholeness. So it, and in that ceremonial ritual practice, you're, you're automatically bringing in all the parts of the self, your consciousness, your unconscious parts, your body, your psyche you're in the experience of walking this path of healing and coming into wholeness yeah and then we've incorporated these different aspects of it um alignment relationship consciousness healing to come to center and in a way i mean christina can talk more about those aspects of the medicine wheel but it's also about the north south axis is the axis of consciousness the east-west axis is the axis of how do we be here in an embodied way and heal and allow our personality to come into alignment with our consciousness and our soul self. 
So it's really holding that uh, energetic of how we can be in that healing process. And I worked with a lot of, um, I worked inpatient, outpatient, I worked with a lot of psychotic patients. I worked with a lot of traumatized children and adolescents also. And I remember, you know, it's some of the children that I, you know, felt so moved to work with who had had such severe trauma really did not know how to relate to humans. Mm. And often the safe relationship they had was with a pet or an animal. Mm. Mm. And part of, you know, part of one aspect of the arch model that we weave in, you know, we, we are traumatized in the context of relationship. We need to heal in the context of relationship. And that can be a healing human relationship, but sometimes it is a healing relationship with an animal or a spirit guide or, um, you know, from the other support from the other realms or from the stars or from, from the plants. So how is it we find that healing relationship in a way that's unique to who we each are? Yeah. And we need a model that can hold that expansiveness of how we can be on this earth plane and heal in the ways that that really are unique to each of us right exactly so that feels like a good segue christina if you feel like it's the right timing for you um would you like to describe a little more of what the arch a r c and h r is that does that feel good for you mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love I'd love for you to jump in here with me, Heather. My as you both speak, my mind is like uh, so much to say, and yeah. uh, so uh, you'll have to rein me in or, or anchor me down. Um, but we we start with um, we start with a we start with alignment, and we continue to move back to alignment because it is I think so uh, foundational to the model, and um, and that is a part of us that we can um that is still that can observe that is the witness to so before we start into the trauma or the wound or the healing we we just make sure that we are able to be here to tap in to move back to so it's kind of you know it becomes this dance you move in and out of it as you work with emotion as you work with thought as you work with wound it's that knowing that you are you are the emotion you know you have the wound but you are also not the emotion you are not the wound so i would say heather please add anything to alignment oh that's beautiful because it is ultimately connecting to that witness self and and the witness self helps us connect to the soul self that then gives us the safety to begin the journey and it is the medicine wheel is the journey around the wheel of going through these phases and not necessarily in a particular order but with these different aspects that are critical to the healing process and i think as you said christina we have to start there and often come back and reconnect there to continue on the journey and I'm thinking of in tra traditional psychotherapy, there is dialectical behavioral DBT, you know, dialectical behavioral therapy. And there's that, the notion of you can go to your wise self. So there, there is something like that in some of the traditional psychotherapeutic approaches. But I think one difference might be that um, in the traditional approach, we wouldn't probably go to such a meta level of aligning with the cosmos and with existence and with the divine and with the earth it wouldn't it wouldn't go to that fullness that feels really important to me mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's a continuum you know you're on a it's a stream mm -hmm. but where you kind of and, that, and that's another piece of the model we make it really it's a template but we really encourage that it's yours and it's your journey so it's where you need to go on that. But I think it is it is important to be somewhat connected. You know, we don't go too far out where you're really disconnected from your body and from the experience. And we, we're talking a lot about wholeness. And I think that um, 
you know, something to note it, when I say wholeness, what I mean by that is that we are holding ourselves as soul beings, having a, an experience embodied and that we acknowledge and we, we claim all aspects of ourselves. And I mean, that is kind of the path that we spiral or through or around that it is this, um, this continual movement uh, to bring things into consciousness, to um, uh, fold in uh, what has been cast off back into the heart or back into love. And as we do that, we drop more and more into who we are, which is, you know, this coming to this authentic place. And from there, we are in line with what is trying to move through us and, and manifest in this world. And so that puts us on life path and purpose. So to me, that is also a very important piece of this wholeness is that we're not meant to just drop into the oneness of all that is, at least that's not my, that's, that's it's not what not I'm doing a right spiritual now. bypass. Yeah. It's, it's, how do you hold that and be here? And we move yeah. in, in and out of all of these states, you know, alignment, I'm moving in and out of alignment a hundred times a day where I can be present with you know, or not, or feel the wound or the emotion or th the thought. So, you know, the, the medicine wheel, it is very, it, it's not, it's not a linear path. We are moving in and out and bringing things into consciousness. And then we move, you know, or, or back unconscious about something. So it's definitely a, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a way of being. It's a dynamic it's a dynamic relationship with being aligned as opposed to a static linear unidirectional. <laughs> Is that accurate? Sense. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So what about, yeah, so align alignment is in the South and then we continue around the medicine wheel clockwise to relationship and how we can be building that sense of a more healing relationship with ourselves as well as how are we finding those supporters, helpers, healers in our lives who can support us in seeing who we truly are and holding ourselves with love and compassion. But again, those relationships can also be with spirit guides, can be with animal guides and helpers. So it's who, what is our support team yeah. and what are yeah. those places that we can feel that connection you know part of for me the journey in my years of doing therapy was realizing how much what was healing in that context of traditional therapy didn't have to do with techniques didn't have to do with the words i said or didn't say in fact i got more and more quiet yes across the years and realized how much what was truly healing was this energetic of being in sacred relationship together in this safe container where the we're both transformed by the process, but the focus is on how that person can feel seen and held and heard. Yes. And, and for me, it's, it's going to a little tiny moment of astrology. It's a chair clo energy to me. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, and for me, what would what what would happen and still happens for me with clients and groups even is it's like this magic energy of it's like a golden light just sort of come fills the room, clicks in and creates this magical space that I cannot explain. <laughs> and that's exactly you know, right. Yeah. Um, that's exactly yeah. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it becomes its own field mm -hmm. I talk about and this and this is another you know piece that is so crucial to i guess to the model is this healing in relationship because the wound or the trauma like we know it doesn't become the event isn't the trauma it's that we weren't held after the event and mm -hmm. so to to heal that split um you know and to heal up that wound there has to be the other and, you know, to hold space so that we can really be seen and heard and witnessed mm -hmm. so we can mend that and move on. Yes. Um, 
Yeah. And, and one, one, piece in that that feels so important to me and is one of the messages that I have been getting from the spirit world for years um and that you all were you know the first ones who I heard hearing similar things saying similar things is is that in traditional psychotherapy the focus of attachment theory is a very human centric theory right so it's and it's very focused on the the source of either you know having a secure attachment or an insecure attachment is the primary caregiver and even if you want to go even more micro it's the mother <laughs> but let's just say that we're talking about a caregiver um that's that caregiver is still a human in that model and and then the issue that i saw so often when i would work with somebody who's 25 or 45 or 65 or even 15 or even you know anyway at any age almost is that if you're beyond the age of having a consistent caregiver or the possibility of a consistent caregiver, let's say you're my age, 46, and let's say you didn't have a secure attachment as a child, it is not the job of your mother or your caregiver to repair that. It's just not, and it's not possible. So then in a traditional psychotherapeutic approach, maybe there would be an attempt for the therapist to somehow help in that relationship to repair the attachment rift but i think that's incredibly limited and difficult also um so then there's this i feel this need to expand attachment theory to include the earth to include the cosmos to include existence to include the divine to include all of these things you are talking about right that um yeah, it's disempowering. It feels very disempowering to think of it as just a human centric thing. Yeah. You know, what's so profound about that, Martha, is be before going into clinical psychology, my background was in cultural anthropology. And part of what I was so interested in exploring and researching were rites of passage and how ancient cultures understood the importance of how we hold those rites of passage. And in particular, if you think about how so many ancient and indigenous cultures have this rite of passage in adolescence where you're going through this ceremonial process of letting go of your identity as you've known it as a child and letting go of that dependence on the biological parents or community to claim and come into your connection with the earth, with the cosmos, with your spirit guides, with that sense of connection, relationship, family being held, and that it takes the weight off the biological parents to be all of that. Mm -hmm. And I think in particular, the pressure our culture puts on the biological mother to be, you know, the earth, the cosmos, the great divine, and the human mother is just really mm -mm. <laughs> harmful, harmful to the mother and harmful to the child to keep putting all that level of expectation on this one human. Right. And to have, and as an adult, then to have this impossible task to, to wish that from your mother, even, I mean, it's just, it's yeah. not, it's not possible <laughs> for her to do that. I'm speaking as a mother, <laughs> right? So, like, <laughs> and as a daughter of a mother. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I, what is most needed is to be seen in your authentic self and for that to be reflected back. But everyone on the planet <laughs> experiences not having that. And we need that throughout our lives. We don't need that just at birth or in the developmental years. We need that reflection back. Mm -hmm. And well so, put. you know, to, to, to have, to be able to develop those relationships outside of us. So when I say the other, but also inside of us. So mm. we have that to reg I want to say regulate us, not it's not the word I want to use, but um to have that to reflect back to us who we are, then we continue to drop into self or soul or that authentic place that we're all we're all uh yearning to come home to. Mm. Again, I feel that wholeness like the mirroring helps us come back into that on a physiological level, even on an energetic level, like brings us back to the wholeness state and alignment and alignment. Yeah. Yeah, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. we'll talk about C Christina, because oh, C. 
I've seen that is seen and see. <laughs> C is all about, you know, what is what we have packed away in our unconscious when we uh, when the wound happened and there was no one there for us and it was too painful um, that we had to bury it and we had to keep the connection with the other, the mother, the father, the external. We had to distort or change who we were. So the authentic self went offline and we this more survival self came online. So that it could keep the sense of belonging, the you know, connection, love, being being wanted. And we just develop these survival selves, these parts of ourselves. Um, so uh, uh, the you know, a big I um uh, piece of the work to heal and to come into wholeness is to reclaim those parts so that they can be seen and heard and held and moved through the trauma, uh, moved through the wounded state. And Heather, did you want to say anything about that? So we could go on for days about that. But but that, yeah, C is for consciousness. And how do we bring those, all those facets of who we are? And as you were saying, Christine, it's not only that some of those memories get repressed, but in more severe trauma, those parts actually you know in shamanic work they call it you know the the importance of soul retrieval but it's like you you lose some of those parts of yourself and that affects your energy that affects your capacity to be in your true self so it it's really and christina's a phenomenal is phenomenally gifted in in writing in the book about how to be in dialogue with those parts of the self to help them come back home, to help them reintegrate as part of the self. Mm -hmm. Again, that wholeness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, because with that wholeness, Martha, um, it's not just the wound or the, the, the sharp feelings that we re we repress because, you know, they're too, too, too heavy or too, um, too hard to hold and, and, um, navigate the world as a child, but we also suppress that those gifts, those that, Mm. you know, that, uh, that what the child also holds in a positive way. Mm. So as we reclaim them, we're, you know, not just reclaiming the wound and healing the wound, we're reclaiming more of ourselves. Mm. And, you know, just a few weeks ago, I did work with an eight-year-old self. And, um, at the end of that reclaiming that process, I, I could observe myself being drawn to more vibrant colors, mm. to more things that felt like play. Mm. Um, and yeah, so it's just, it's, yeah, again, the wholeness. Mm. Yeah. And it remind that reminds me also of, <clears throat> um, you know, in general, the sense that, that I'm having of us coming back that this this is a new way but it's also such an old way right that that the the spirit world keeps saying to me um with my work but i think it's relevant to your work too that that when we're cutting off parts of ourselves and parts of our gifts and parts of our passion and what's naturally needing and wanting to come through us uh it's actually um an injustice to the world in a sense it's it's like a um it's an act of of justice to bring it all here, like on an individual level, on a collective level, on a professional level, on a personal level, all of it. For you know, and I think these things have been pushed aside because of personal trauma and then also because of collective trauma. So many, so many different reasons throughout time. Um and yeah, I'm just getting it more and more in my own body. How no. <laughs> it it's all needed right here right now um yeah well and i i think what you're saying martha so fits with you know our perspective as astrologers also that part of what i love about astrology in contrast to psychology is astrology really holds that awareness that we each are completely unique expressions mm. Mm. of the self and you can think about how we're each a fractal of cosmic consciousness. Mm. 
But if we're not living out our uniqueness and our own individual gifts and qualities, then that's missing from the whole. So Mm -hmm. we do in, in coming into consciousness, we're reclaiming the parts of ourself, but we're reclaiming that uniqueness, as you were saying, Christina, that only we can bring into the world. So beautiful. Yeah. It's like the healthy Leo energy, right? Like that each beautiful, unique flower that it, like, I want to see your colors. Like, what are your colors? I want to know all of them. (laughs) That's so beautiful. (laughs) Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's a beautiful way to say that. You know, we all have these, these, you know, certain, I love that, uh, the image of these speaking about energy and vibration and yeah, we all, we all come with something different. Mm-hmm. So then we keep going around the circle and come to H for healing. Can you, why don't you talk okay. more about that, Christina, and then I'll talk about the center. Okay. Well, just, um, uh, we, I mean, we talk about specific ways to maybe pull in, um, you know, healing and, um, but also, uh, hmm, we really encourage that to be organic because that, that can, um, look different, but also, also really expand in different, you know, depending. So, um, some he- healing really works in an embodied way for someone and, someone else maybe needs to pull in, um, healing through imagery or meditation or art. So it's, um, again, or ceremony. Yeah. So we do go through, um, give people ideas, but, but the idea behind the ideas is to spark within you, what would feel healing. And in my journey, I often brought in light And I just thought, you know, just intuitively, okay, I'm going to bring this light in or this energy in that's going to just start to, you know, um, scoop off the heavy energy, like scoop off the depression, like just scooping off um, ice or snow off a walkway. And it just, and then I felt lighter. And then I just would bring light in with my, with the palms of my hands on my chest until I felt like there was a shift. And then I'd get, and then it would go deeper and deeper. And then at the end of it, I'd feel, I'd feel just aligned or back into this lightness of being. So, you know, again, that's very, um, it it feels, it feels like that's, you know, accessible and a lot, something that a lot of people would probably already be doing, but it was intuitive at the time. So I think that's the idea behind the healing. Um, One of the other things that you um, incorporate or talk about in the book that I love, Christina, is how when you would do the dialoguing with the parts of the self to help them feel seen and held and heard, and then you would often ask them, what do you need? What do you need? Mm. So the parts can voice themselves what they need to heal, and it might be going for a walk in the woods, or it might be spending time with my cat it but whatever that part needs is part of how then we can hold that space to be allowing that healing to happen in that unique way Mm. and I love that especially I love that focus on helping the person to find find what they're needing and voice it in themselves because as we know with trauma a lot of times what can happen is that we shut down (laughs) our <clears throat> our ability to know in ourselves what we need and and we're looking in fear to the outside to be told what to do or what we need or um which sometimes is helpful sometimes we do just need someone to step in and say okay this is a crisis moment we're going to do this do it but but and over time to be able to learn in ourselves how to find oh nobody else can really tell me i today i need whatever it is, um, green juice. I need like kale and apples or something. You know, how would anyone know that about my body except me in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Similar with what you're saying. I think we can't Mm -hmm. typically know that XYZ technique is going to be the thing for the person in each 10 second increment um, to have that skill in ourselves. It feels like, yeah, one of the best gifts we can offer. And we also, in 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 the book and in, in our ARCH program, talk a lot about 
different shamanic and energy um, ways of healing and how particularly, I mean, one of the, the ways that Christina and I use a lot in our own process is a fire ceremony mm. where, you know, it, and again, ceremony helps weave in the whole self, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, but it also is calling in these other energies to know that we're being supported in healing beyond our even our full conscious awareness in that moment. Mm-hmm. So I think simple ceremonies like a fire ceremony can be profound for supporting what we need to release and then what we're trying to energize or support or strengthen in ourselves. Beautiful. I love it. So the medicine wheel, as Christina was saying earlier, is really a spiral journey. You're weaving in and out of these different um, parts of the healing journey, ultimately to come to center. And part of what I love about that image of being in the center, and for me, it is it is that experience or that sense of being in alignment with the soul self, being at the center. We all hold that energy of the center within us. It is also how we're oriented, our center is where we are oriented on the earth in this time and in the cosmos. But it's also that awareness that the center is in all that is. And when we're in the center of the medicine wheel, we realize we are on this journey to experience all these different things in this lifetime. But as Christina was saying earlier, we're not that. Our soul self is journeying through many lifetimes and we come here to grow and evolve but we're ultimately a part of infinity Mm -hmm. and when we're in the center we're integrating all those aspects of this personality this life experience but we're remembering we are these soul selves having a human experience and we're beyond all of this so it 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 is not only about holding the wholeness but holding that larger soul level knowing of who we are and what this journey is about. Absolutely. Yes. Wonderful. Um, What I'm being drawn to is to ask you to describe the program, the actual arch program you have coming up. Is, Is there anything left over that you feel like either of you want to say about the model of it? Um, I'm, I think that's good to talk about the program. What about you, Christina? Yeah, it feels good. Great. So yeah, I know you, you do have an arch model program training program coming up in um, the fall of starting in the fall of 2023. And you do it periodically. So yes, I would love to hear more about that. Well, it's a it's a 10 month program. And it is both supporting people in integrating the arch medicine wheel and the healing journey for themselves, but then also learning how to incorporate that to be supporting others in their healing journey. So it is a trauma-informed life coach training program. And we draw in a lot of people who are already healers in some way or therapists But also we draw in people who've been very much on their own healing journey and wanting to deepen in that and then be able to support others in their healing journeys. But it's it's both learning about the aspects of the model, but then very much experiencing it and being engaged in practical uh, ways of working with the model with each other. To experience it. Beautiful. Do you want to add anything, Christina? Yeah, just um, you know, Heather and I, um, we we and and Martha, actually, you and I have talked about this. Mm-hmm. Some of the need for more therapists to be trauma informed, and also for the need um, for more energy practitioners and life coaches and. Um, you know, those in the ministry, those who are, you know, in the helping fields uh, to to have sub trauma um, training. Um, be, um, we, 
we could we could talk a lot about why, but um, we just I think that was the pool for us. Um, what what it, what was needing to emerge past the book was um, uh, that this was this this not just the, this modality, but this way of working trauma was needed more um, for for healers, practitioners, and therapists. Yes, and and yes, you and I. We, you, Christina, you and I had an interview a year ago um, where we talked about more about this. But yeah, something I've absolutely seen for sure is like we've already been talking about in the psychotherapy therapy world. I see this need and this call to um, expand the way that the psychotherapeutic approaches are conceived of, and then on the other side is also I'm an astrologer. And I was a body worker for a long time, a massage therapist, an energy worker. So in those worlds, people absolutely have that more expanded consciousness around soul, et cetera, et cetera, and um, don't so much have the training around trauma. So it's uh, what I feel like is your ARCH program brings together both worlds and can serve people in both worlds. Um, And I know I, I was feeling so worried honestly about what i was seeing in the astrology world around the lack of trauma informed approaches that i held a one time workshop <laughs> you know on basic trauma informed basics for astrologers and healers but it's it's a 2 hour one and a half hour workshop that, that just gives us the tiny tip, tip of the iceberg and and so what i would want to say to the people even who attended that is and if you want to go more deeply which a lot of them do this like this is one really beautiful way to do that um because it is broken down and you know as we've already just discussed it's so comprehensive and is a 10-month program and as opposed to an hour and a half little tiny little thing (laughs) but it's such 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 a huge need huge need and yeah people in both both worlds are are only wanting to help right and we're all only wanting we only want to help and we are all we all have areas to grow and learn and yeah that, yep. that's and what if I, I can think. just yep, yeah sorry Martha just wanted to add in um I don't know that it's necessary but it is experiential only that we want to give um you know and we think it's important that everyone you know has experience actually doing the model but also this is a training program so kind of the expectation is you've done enough of the work that um you know we we're, we all have wounds they'll all come you know we're always working them but if you're needing more if you're still more in the trauma then we would mm-hmm. say work with someone you know do some of that work heal up so that you're you're in a space where you have enough of the witness self to um to work it that you're not re-traumatized mm-hmm. in the group and kind of uh floundering there i think that's just the one differentiation it's not a full uh experiential group it that's part of part of the training but it is a, a training so it's it's not a treatment program it's a training program is that accurate yeah thank you yeah that's well said do you want to say and, a little, oh, go ahead no you go ahead no go ahead well, maybe you're going to say something similar. I was just going to say, would you like, can you describe a little more or speak more directly to the people who would be the ideal people to sign up for this? Um, I mean, I, I, I can hear a few questions in my mind that I can imagine being asked by people. So, but maybe Heather, you were about to say something similar. I'm not sure. Well, what I was going to say is we do very consciously hold the training in the context of the group as a sacred circle also. Mm -hmm. So that we're really holding that safe space to be in the process of uh, the learning and healing and experiencing and training that we're doing together. Mm -hmm. But I think as we were talking earlier, for me, in, in different energy healing programs I was in, in many of the shamanic trainings I was in, it really concerned me that there was no understanding of the early developmental process, attachment issues, trauma issues, how if you help someone clear something, how do they integrate it? Yeah. How do they work the layers then of what that means to be 
you know, embodying a new way of feeling about themselves, seeing themselves, patterns in their lives. So this program is very much for people that are interested in being a healer in some context, but it's providing, we do provide a lot of information about um, trauma, about, you know, the context of development and psychological understanding to balance that for people that are coming out of a healing practice. And then for those who are already coaches or therapists, it's really expanding it in terms of understanding more of how do you work with the soul self and how do you work in this more expansive way? Mm -hmm. So it's very much what we were just describing before. Beautiful. Wonderful. Um, And Yeah. And so for people who are more in the, the, the circumstance of feeling like this is really intriguing to me, but actually I would like to, I would like to experience my own healing a bit more is the best thing. What's the best thing for them to do in that circumstance to be in touch with you or yes. Pick up, pick up the book, pick up the book, (laughs) pick up the book and start there and (laughs) reach out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, reach out to us and we could give them some resources. Wonderful. Great. Is there anything else you feel like we've missed? Or is wanting to be said? I would just add again, Martha, uh, circling back to what you said at the beginning, that I truly believe this is an exceptional time on the planet. And the energies of the earth changes that are happening, the energies in the cosmos, the energies astrologically are heightening the sense of urgency for all of us to heal, to wake up, to be in a transformational process. So I think there's a lot of energy in the collective and in, you know, our experience here that's supporting us in being on a path of healing right now. And this is this is a path for that. Yes. And as you're talking, something that that is, I'm feeling very strongly in my body and the spirit world is saying, say this, <laughs> is um, <clears throat> something else you and Heather, you and I have talked about, I think, is that also in this time when, when the energies are so intense and, you know, I feel the energy is changing so fast and the healing is wanting to happen so quickly I think there's also the potential for us to pretty easily get thrown off center. So if, if these energies are coming in and, and they're ultimately um, wanting to help us, they're, they're wanting to help us to heal and all of that. But if we don't have a way to be truly completely grounded and aligned and held in it, um, the potential again, for us to, to, not be centered and to have things kind of go haywire, I think is also pretty strong. So absolutely. Yeah. So that's what I'm feeling as you guys are talking is that this arch model and your support and your work is one incredibly powerful opportunity to just boom, like have a way to ground fully in with the earth, with the cosmos, with ourselves, um, with our own light, really, that's actually what I'm feeling and the light of the earth and the light of existence in a way that is safe, is held, has community space with it um, and feels complete to me. I mean, not for everybody, but for the people who it's right for that, that's what I'm feeling in the energetic of it is just, wow, it's such a beautiful, unique opportunity. Yeah. I think we're definitely on the, in in those times where it's death, rebirth, death, rebirth, death, rebirth, Mm -hmm. or, you know, we're in, and when we, um, you know, and I keep the words that keep coming to me is heal, integrate to to expand. Mm -hmm. Those are the energies really wanting us to heal and then integrate ourselves, but integrate, you know, the woundedness, the, the gifts, and then to expand out in our true light and our authenticity and our gifts because that is needed to create change, but it is like, you know, so new and fresh and, it, you know, so fragile in the beginning of a rebirth mm-hmm. that we need support. 
you know, we just need containment supports like these little babies, you know, <laughs> support yeah. and containment so that they can help them grow and, and, you know, evolve into different beings, mm-hmm. different embodied beings. And so how do we continue to, yeah, support each other? It's a lot of the work that you do, Martha. Mm-hmm. And, and just following up on what you said, Martha, and I also think that um, this, from an astrological perspective, is this time where whatever unresolved wounds we each have, they're right up. I mean, in, in years past, when I was a therapist, you could, you know, incrementally work through a healing process across years. But what I've experienced now in interacting with people is those things aren't below the surface anymore. They're right up. They're right in our faces. And I I believe that part of what we're experiencing on the planet is either we're getting that support, like Christina's talking about, and we have a path to be grounded and we're move on an accelerated path of healing, or we're getting overwhelmed. And I think a lot of the violence that we're seeing, a lot of the reactivity, as Christina was saying, a lot of the projection that's happening in the collective is because those wounds are up and we're either working them and healing them or they're working us Mm -hmm. and controlling us. Mm -hmm. And then we're in a dynamic that's creating more trauma on the planet. So I think this is a karmic choice point for us individually and collectively to heal, as Christina said, to then be able to integrate and expand or to get more and more overwhelmed, more and more reactive, more in a path that's destructive. Yes. And 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 then the last thing I think I'm feeling called to say is, is that I think a lot of people listening to this video probably and who are drawn to your work and drawn to all of this kind of work, typically we tend to be givers, right? So I can imagine people potentially feeling like, well, to focus on my own healing is, you know, a little self-centered, a little whatever narcissistic or something and the reality is first of all no it's not but second of all it's really not (laughs) because the ultimate purpose here like you're saying christina is certainly the personal healing but it's really about the personal healing being the key like the thing that will turn the lock that then allows us each to be that butterfly or that sequoia or that whatever it is that we're here to be and to be of service to the planet, to existence, you know, in that whole to help the planet heal. Yeah, that that's really, really, really the ultimate point. Yeah, beautifully said. Beautifully <laughs> said. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, and blessings to everyone.